your painting in the mind of an ancient god, can you please discuss uh, more about your process and the creative process of this? Yeah, this, this painting of mine, in the mind of an ancient god, I did a number of years ago, probably 20 some odd years ago. And it was a painting that really explored ancient Atlantean memories. Things that came to me in lucid dream states where I was taken back to three different phases in the ancient Atlantean histories. And what's fascinating about all of this is that in the process of painting, in the process of, of examining, many memories start to return. And they're not, in a sense, uh, visual memories of this or that, but more of a type of visceral, a feeling memory of how the environment felt, how it uh, smelled. And this is why in the lucid dream state, which I used to experience quite regularly, I had been asking about ancient Atlantis. I wanted to understand its relationship to us because my first dream experience was actually, I was on board of a Mayan spacecraft when I was a little boy, about three years old, my first dream remembrance. And, and that I was taken out and actually shown the moon and the planets and then it Saturn returned a hard right and this spaceship was actually the living stone it was membranous so it, it left a very strong impression and a very deep curiosity and as I went deeper in my studies and my conversations here I really wanted to know what is this story of Atlantis so the first night I was taken back a bit like Scrooge in, in a Christmas Carol I was taken back to uh, the earliest part of At Atlantis. And this was a civilization that had no right angles. It was a bit like looking at the architecture of Antonio Gaudi, you know, this organic growing out of the earth. And I was, uh, in, in the next night, I was taken back and, and the planes of superconductivity were there. And it was this story that everything moved in relationship to the sun as if to show us that the layering of the story of what we think of as Atlantis went through many phases itself. And I was taken uh, on the second night, I was taken to their library and I met their president who had four wives. And the four wives were like the four wives of Pharaoh, essentially living the four directions and they were his counsel. And then they had the good grace to show me their language. And I said, ah, and I looked at their books and I wrote it down diligently. And I, I just, I, I awakened from the dream and I, I made sure I, I remembered it only to awaken again in the dream and realize I was dreaming that I was awake. And so most of it uh, essentially went into that realm of can't quite remember. But my Codex Tor books, my work on the hieroglyph of the human soul, and the story of the Watcher language, all of these are connected to not the direct memory of these ancient civilizations, but actually a type of cellular memory that we rediscover because we can't actually go back there. So in painting or in drawing, we draw it forth. And because it comes into our time, it has to make sense in a way that inspires us. And that's why this painting as people enter the libraries, they come up the stairs to the Hieroglyph of the Human Soul, or Thoth's library. They're reminded that our story is very ancient, and that what you think of as the magical and mystical stories of Atlantis actually are indicating that who we think we are is very deep, and very rich, and waiting for inquiry if we don't use it to prove something, or to fight something, or to insist this is how it happened, but more, think of it more like Mozart. It's a musical proof, meaning if the music is beautiful, if the painting is beautiful, it's not proving something, it's just maybe slowing you down to say, let's have a conversation. Let's see where our imaginations take us, because that story of Atlantis is in you. And if you ask the right questions, look at the right pictures, it might not be a direct knowing, but something. In the sense, when you smell something in a distance, when you feel something that's not quite there, but what those things do, is they give us a type of reassurance to trust our imagination and to not try and use what happens to us subjectively in an argument, but rather to cultivate it as a relationship, as a painter does. It says, I'll learn from the willingness to enter the question. And that's why the third night of Atlantis, I was taken and it was on the bottom of the ocean. It was covered with all sorts of algae and green moss as if to say, you can't know these things directly. They're buried so far 
away, you'll never find them. But they're there. It's just, how do we pay attention to that which inspires us? Because this is what awakens these ancient memories, not the sense that we're going to actually dredge them up, but we're actually going to allow them to participate. And at least for me, that makes us much more interesting and much more aware that who we think we are is far deeper, far richer, far more remarkable. And I find that inspiring. And at this moment, anything that inspires the yes rather than the yikes allows us to return to a story that says it's never easy, but my God, what you're part of is something remarkable. Thanks. In the mind of an ancient God.